Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Yumesh Gupta. In this video, we are going to talk about JavaScript promises again. This would be the second part of our promise series where we talk about fundamentals regarding promises, async programming that every front-end engineer should know. Hopefully this would be a quick one where we are going to talk about concepts like event loop. We are briefly going to touch about, you know, talk and discuss event loop, macro task queues, micro task queues, how promises fit into all this. We are going to take a look at some live examples to see end to end flow. Plus there would be some interesting questions for you to solve. So I would say watch till the end. So without wasting any time, let's get started. So the first thing that's going to come to, you know, everyone's mind is what is event loop and why should I care about this? Now to tackle the first part, in the most simple layman terms, I could say is that event loop is, you know, an endless loop as the name suggests loop. It's an endless loop where the JavaScript engine executes tasks. Now these tasks could be anything. It could be click handlers. It could be callbacks, you know, callbacks are scheduled by the web APIs, your promises. Let's say you load a script. Now you need to execute that script. Anything, any execution in the user land or, you know, in the browser run by the JavaScript engine, everything goes through the event loop. And now there are different, you know, stages to it. Sometime the e event loop, you know, is waiting for a task or sometime it's running a task, executing a task and so on. There are different tasks, different type of tasks and there are different queues for it. And we are going to talk about that uh, further in the video. Now, the second part is why should you care or why should I care? Technically, or the simple answer is you shouldn't. I mean, you can, you know, just write your code and go about your day. There's nothing wrong with that. But let's say you learn to drive a car. You can, uh, you know, put your shoe on the pedal and go about your day and drive as much as you want. But if you know that when exactly you need to shift gears, when exactly, you know, at what speed, if you drive on a certain road, then, you know, the ride your efficiency or your mileage would be more or what should be the ideal rpm and those nitty gritties then that would increase the performance that would increase the efficiency of your drive driving plus the durability and life of your car also it would make uh, the you know ride for you the ride quality for you and your fellow passengers much much better the same logic applies here that uh, if you understand the nitty gritties of the event loop, like I mentioned that anything in your browser run by the JavaScript engine goes through the event loop. So that includes, you know, repainting your browsers, updating your UI, handling your click handlers, and user clicking on a button or, you know, interacting with the input field, everything goes through the event loop. So now if we know how the event loop works and if we know what are the nitty gritties of it, then, and, and if we, after understanding that, if we understand how to write our code in a way that it is optimized for the event loop, then it would increase the performance. It would, you know, give a better experience to your end users. And if it better performance, better experience leads to, you know, happy customers, happy customers needs more money and more money means your appraisal is going to be good. So you need to learn this. So we talked about, uh, briefly talked about uh, event loop and endless loop where JavaScript engine executes the task. Now the question is, what are different type of tasks and what are different type of queues for that task? And uh, so let's talk about that. So basically we have two queues. One is, you can say task queue and one is micro task queue. So this task queue is also called macro task queue. Uh, we can call it macro task queue. Now, both are queues, both follow first in, first out, the, uh, first in, first out. So if you, though, that means the oldest task get, uh, gets executed first. Uh, but the difference here is uh, that in the macro task queue, that, so as, as we discussed that it is an endless loop and every loop has an iteration. So let's say in the first iteration, the event loop checks the macro task queue it sees there is a task T1, it picks up the task T1 and it executes the code. Now, this task could be your normal program flow, your callbacks or, you know, you call set timeout and you pass a callback to it. That callback is assigned to my macro task queue. Now, let's say this uh, T1 
sets another callback set timeout and inside that timeout you we have a function uh, foo so now this foo function will be queued in the macro task queue and once this uh, task is executed and it is over then the event loop goes to the micro task queue and now the the difference lies here that it it checks that there is t3 then it picks up t3 and it executes it then it again checks the micro task queue is there any other task yes then it picks up t4 and uh, then it picks up the next task and so on till the queue becomes empty so the thing here to understand is that the for the macro task queue for every iteration the event loop will visit the macro task queue just once that it picks up t1 it executes it then it is not going to come back to macro task queue but in case of micro task queue what happens is that uh, it picks up t3 executes it it picks up t4 then t5 t6 and so on till this my micro task queue becomes empty now the thing is that when you talk about promises then people say it is you know promises are non blocking you wrap something inside a promise and it becomes non blocking then your code becomes non blocking it's not exactly like that you need to understand what you are exactly doing uh, that your code if you simply wrapping something in a promise doesn't make your code entirely non promise like so like here we are saying that uh, on every iteration of the event loop after the task exits execution call stack is empty the task from micro task queue are the task from micro task queue are picked up till the queue becomes empty so that means let's say i have a task t3 inside this t3 we you know set another promise we we do some computation and maybe let's say we do some computation and we let's say return a new promise from this okay so now this new promise let's say let's call it t100 so what happens is that this t100 goes to the bottom of the queue uh, now we go to t4 now the same thing let's say t4 also queues a new promise or creates a new promise so that becomes let's say 101 it goes to the end of the queue so now you see the pattern that if you you know continuously returning promises and every task is returning every micro task is returning a new promise then there is a it it would become an endless loop here also so this would also block your uh, event loop because this queue will never be empty so simply saying that if you you know wrap something in a promise that is going to make your entire code non blocking that is not true you need to be mindful of how you are writing code and what you are writing to actually make your code non blocking and this is the same case here that if you have uh, a task t1 if, so like i mentioned that the event loop anything from your browser rendering from your handling of click handlers from uh, you know Uh, interacting with the input fields everything runs through the event loop so let's say you have a you know you you have a code where you are rendering a chart on the screen so there could be multiple parts to it one would be fetching the data then another there would be uh, maybe you are transforming the data maybe another one would be you know preparing the data for the chart or preparing the chart and the next one would be rendering the chart now let's say if you have a task t1 and you are doing everything uh together and your computation or your transforming is you know a very expensive comp uh, task or very expensive computation now the event loop is currently executing t1 which is the entire process of rendering the chart it cannot go to the micro task queues it cannot go uh, and uh, go back so, to the macro task queue so in the meantime user clicks on you know some button or some you know uh interact with some input field then they would see the lag they their browser will not update instantaneously so that is why people say that you should write non blocking code by exact by that they mean that you should understand that uh, how event loop works and you have to break up your code into certain parts that it become that you you are doing something in the meantime once that's done 
then you you know schedule another task maybe using set time out or maybe you using promises or something else but you break your code into or write your code into certain parts that your your event loop is not always stuck on a single individual task so let's take a look at some code examples now so we have this code example where we have a function named call and inside that we are resolving a promise we are invoking the function on line number five and then we have three thens uh, in the first we have the first function then second and third and we are printing one two three now we are again invoking the call function on line number 10 and then we have again three thens fourth fifth and sixth and four five six we are printing so now let's or first of all if you are watching my channel for the first time or if you are using the dev tools tech platform then console.print is a custom function that is there to print anything on the right output panel just clarifying that now back to the question so if i run this now this piece is a code snippet right now then what do you think would be the output of course this code is written in a certain way to make you understand a concept uh, if you feel or find any flaw and all then please do feel free to mention in the comments but uh, bear with me so if i run this then what do you think would be output pause here for the moment pause the video think it over and maybe write down your answer and then we'll match so now let me run this so if i run this now then the output is one four two five three six that means first line number six then eleven then seven then 12 then 8 and the last 13 so why do you think uh, this is happening i mean in the very first glance i think it should have been like 1 2 3 then 4 5 6 but it's not the case why do you think that is i mean we uh, when we were discussing micro task and micro task queues we discussed that micro task that uh, the promise callbacks, the then callbacks, those functions get queued in the micro task queue and uh, the, it's a first in first out thing and the promises are sc uh, scheduled. So it, is that related to this? It's, so what I'll do is that I'll replace this code with an equivalent code where we can debug and see what is happening under the hood. So I comment out this and I paste this. Let me format this. Uh, I think we have to replace console log with print. So this becomes print. So micro Q micro task is a utility you can say provided to us by the browser or the runtime where you, you can use this function to queue a task in the micro task queue. As simple as that. So the syntax is that you have queue micro task, you pass a callback to it, and this callbacks get queued to the micro task queue it goes at the very bottom of the queue so we'll see here that we queue a micro task uh, we call the function we pass the post so this is this case here that uh, we have a then whatever we pass to the then the callback gets queued to the micro task queue the same equivalent call here that we are passing the first function and we are print printing out console dot print one uh, when this function executes in this case when the promise sorry when this promise returns then we go to the next then that means that when this function first function executes we call the second queue micro task and we pass the second function to it this here and this is the function now when this in the inside this second function we have console we are printing the two now when this function executes we set we queue another micro task and we uh, that uh, callback is third and we are printing uh, three here similarly uh, we call another queue micro task we pass fourth function to it when this function execute it queues another micro task which is named fifth and uh, we print five inside that and we queue another micro task in here on line number 35 and inside that we are printing six so this is similar to this that we you know when this promise is resolved then returns a promise it is resolved then we go to the next then and another is queued then we go to the next then and so on. So now if you see this that when the code runs then first queue micro task is executed and the first function so let's say if we have a queue let's consider this as a queue 
we have forced entered here then uh, yeah, this function is queued then we go to this queue micro task this task is queued and the fourth function is queued now when the event loop runs and you know micro task is empty it picks the first function it executes it and this sets another micro task so fourth and then we have second so now it again go to the queue it picks a fourth and run this so we have second and then we have fifth because the fourth fourth function when it is executing it is pushing fifth function then you have fifth and it is executed and it pick fifth uh, sorry it picks second function first and the second function is queuing third function so fifth and third and then you have fifth function which is executed we have third function here then it sets the sixth function because when fifth function is executed it sets the sixth function so that means the third function is executed it, it is setting no new micro task so we just have sixth and then sixth function event loop picks up the sixth function the our queue becomes empty and it moves on to the next iteration and and if you run this if i run this we are going to have the same output one four two five three six so we saw this example where we were uh, queuing the micro tasks and we were printing four five two four one four two five three six now let's visualize this that how this is actually working we we saw the explanation here so we have the same code here let me zoom in a bit more so we have the same code here and we see that we have a result promise then first second third fourth fifth sixth so now if i run this that if i uh, run this right now this is pending this is pending and so on so if i take the next step then this function is fulfilled uh, the first function then you can say the fourth then the fourth function is fulfilled then second and then fifth then third and then sixth so this is uh, this validates I, our hypothesis that uh, that first first function is executed uh, then it queues the second function so fourth then the next fourth function is executed it uh, schedules the fifth function then sec second function then fifth then third and sixth so just let me repeat this for more understanding initially nothing is fulfilled then first fourth second fifth third and six and this was the output we were seeing so we saw this snippet and the output so now it's time for you to solve a question so we were in this uh, function on line number two we were resolving a promise what if i replace it with this that i am returning a promise and uh, resolving it uh, inside a set timeout with zero delay so now if i run this then what would be the output let me just run it for you so it would be one two three four five six it is quite different from the output we were seeing when we were using return prom promise dot resolve so why do you think that's the case when we are using this syntax then the output is different and when we were using directly promise dot resolve then the output is different mention your comments uh, mention your answers uh, in the comments or on linkedin and tag me and let's see what you come up with that so this brings end to uh, our video i hope you were able to learn something new today if yes then please do like share and subscribe uh, do share this video on social media platform help us raise awareness around our content so that you know other people can benefit and our channel grows and it gives us motivation to do more so till next time see you bye bye take care